Hi, everybody. Welcome back to IBM Think 2024. We're here at the BECC in Boston where theCUBE got started in 2010. We're really excited to have Emily Fontaine, who's the head of IBM Global Ventures, and Dave Donahue, who's the head of strategy at Unstructured. We're going to talk money, we're going to talk startups, we're going to talk innovation. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank Next, you for having on. us. We're <laughs> thrilled to be here. Yeah, Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, pumped. Yeah. So IBM has a long history of M&A, investing yep. in companies. Tell us about IBM Global Ventures. Yeah. Um, you've got obviously got a fund. You've yeah. made an investment. We're going to get into it. What's What's the overall story of yeah. IBM Global Ventures? Well, thank you for asking, right? And as you said, IBM has a long history of AI capacity and delivering those to our clients globally, right? And on the most complex challenges. We launched the AI Fund to invest in a range of companies from early to growth stage startups. Our goal there is to accelerate innovation at the infrastructure and enterprise application layers, right? So we're investing in companies that have cutting edge solutions and that are bringing more robust, comprehensive set of capabilities to our clients. The last thing I'll say on this is our portfolio companies provide emerging market trends, right, and deliver incredible value. In turn, we're helping those companies get onto enterprise ecosystems, and as a result, we're delivering our clients and partners best of breed, trusted solutions that are getting after their most challenging problems. So, so of course, with a strategic investor like IBM, yes. you're looking for a fit Yes. within the IBM ecosystem, yes. within the IBM portfolio. Yes. And, and typically you're saying early early to mid-stage companies yes. that, are, that have not necessarily scaled to go to market, is that right? It really depends, and it depends on the strategic fit and where we're trying to go into that market. So we made a huge investment in Hugging Face, right, recently, which was a later was a later stage fund because of the strategic value to Watson X. And Watson X is all about what we're here to deliver Gen AI to our clients. Right. So it really depends on the partnerships that we're creating and the value we can drive for our clients. Got it. All right, Dave. Um, I know you're not a founder, but put your That's founder correct. head on why <laughs> I'll do why my best. was the company started? Uh, I'd be interested in why you joined it, but what your role <laughs> is. Yeah, why you joined the company. I yeah, mean, you must course. ask us, why did you start the company? What problems are you guys solving? Yeah, sure. Um, so the company's called Unstructured, right? So I think the name kind of speaks for itself. We want to structure unstructured data. Um, unstructured data has been a historically a huge problem for data engineers to solve, um, creating bespoke pipelines for downstream applications. And so Brian, one of the, fa the founder, CEO, and a couple others were saying, this is crazy how much time and energy and professional services that are taking, companies that are taking, to kind of solve these kind of like one-off solutions. Why isn't there just an agnostic platform that can take in any file type, any file format, and transform that into a, a normalized JSON or normalized document? So that's what, that's what they built, right? So it started with an open source library about a year ago. Um, we've had 9 million downloads of that globally, um, which kind of gave us like conviction around product market fit. And so some of these companies, IBM included, there's probably 250 of the, of the 500, Fortune 500 companies using us. Um, and a lot of those are kind of like production-like workloads. So some type of ongoing usage case, which suggests to us that there's a lot of kind of like a good path forward for unstructured. Um, and move like AI stuff moving forward. Well, you asked the rhetorical question: Why don't why don't people why don't somebody do that? Because it's hard. It's it That's is the I most know. boring, <laughs> difficult, time-consuming work. And so we're like, hey, nobody else wants to come after this because of how painful it is. And so we wanted to chase it. So we've been kind of maniacally focused on creating solutions for developers to enable human-generated data connect to connect to machines. And so it's, you know, great timing, obviously, with, you know, OpenAI and ChatGPT and all these kind of applications that depend on a lot of data. And so we're like, hey, we'll help you with that data problem. And I, I just want to add here something Please, I think yeah, is so for interesting for me about Unstructured, why I was so excited they're a portfolio company, is the fact that all of our clients come to us and they have massive amounts of data and they need to be able to ingest that and figure out how best to deliver insights on that and make actionables and sort through that data. And Unstructured really is an opportunity for them to be able to do that in a meaningful way. And that's why our partnership is so exciting. Yeah, so a lot of synergies within yeah. IBM and across the portfolio. So as a capital allocator, a typical VC would say, I'm looking for market size, team, and potential for moat. Yep. I, I, how do you 
think about those in in order of importance. Uh, you, you know, market size maybe isn't as important for you because yeah. you got the yeah. biggest market yeah. in the world. <laughs> right? But yes. I presume team and tech. Yes, are, are important. So are. what was it about the team and the tech that interested you? Yeah, so I'll say the first thing I'll say, right, is we have a differentiated model, right? And we are very much looking for exceptional teams that are delivering market critical solutions, right? That's the most important thing that we're doing. We use a series of experts across IBM. We also use external experts. We have a fantastic portfolio team with a ton of experience. And we're really investing in the current and future leaders of AI, they're going to help us unlock the potential for the businesses. So that kind of off the bat, and, right? And just, just like yes, when they invest in us, we had very little commercial revenue, right? <laughs> so like we were just getting off the ground. So part of the you know the to about the team and the moat. I mean, it's about you know our founder and our like leadership team. But like this is a huge problem space that IBM is going to help us yeah. kind of unpack, which mm -hmm. is awesome, right? And I think Dave, to that, right? I think what's exciting for us is. Like we've developed a meaningful partnership, right? Yeah. Which has been hugely important. We're helping you unlock doors to go to market opportunities, as well as products, engineering, and then all of those key interlocks with potential clients. Clients that you may go after by yourself, but clients we're going after together and creating these partnerships. It's so invaluable. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's huge because, you know, startups are risky. Yeah. And if you come in with, a, with, a, with an IBM, uh, it, uh, you don't have a board seat. We don't have Correct. a board seat. Okay, and but, how much did but you we're, invest? But, but we're an observer seat, and Dave, I'll let you answer that question yeah. if you want. Yeah, so I mean, IBM is like intimately involved in everything. <laughs> like we, we treat them just like we would our, you know, the people with the seats. This is a partnership that we want to continue because we understand the value that yeah. they can help us bring to market and vice versa. So, okay, so <laughs> you mentioned, I think, 9 million downloads, you said, which is sort of Correct. an indicator of product market fit. Yeah. Um, Tell me more about that. Like, I, I'm always asking startups, how do you know when you have product market fit? Because so often I'll see startups try to scale go to market before they have product market fit, and it just it doesn't work, and they end up firing all the salespeople they just hired. Now, you've got a go to market partner, so it's a little different, but correct. double click on that. Sure, yeah. So um, I, I think the 9 million downloads, you, you look across a bunch of kind of companies that have open source, Apache libraries, or a bachelor license with libraries in the open source and GitHub. Nine million is a lot for this type of technology, <laughs> yeah. right? So um, it, it was a validation, you know, in the, the investors we got in our Series A and in our yeah. Series B saying like, hey, we also know that this is a problem. Like, yes, the market is validating it with the number of downloads you have, but we also kind of being intimately uh, involved with and having companies that are touching the space, touching AI, understand how big of a problem unstructured data is in order to, you know, in, for the future of AI, requires good data. And the only way you have good data is by accessing the rest of the data that's unstructured, right? 80% of uh, enterprise data. So what's the business model in terms of, how do you make money? That's a good question. We're working on it. So we're dual, dual use technology, right? So yeah. we are involved in government, on the government side. So we have contracts over there um, with a number of different partners. And then on the commercial side, we just launched our first API, our SaaS API back in January. So you can, process, transform your documents as you need to through our API, and we process on a compute-based or consumption-based model there. And then what we're moving to is we'll keep the API, but then we'll also have a platform, which is you know a self-serve model, so people can access it on a per-page basis or per-page pricing model. But I think where we're going to get a ton of value down the road is why we have people like IBM as partners here, because there's integrations that will help us to kind of, you know, really create some growth within terms of our revenue, right? If we integrate with something like Watson Data, yeah, that would be an enormous value for us in terms of like, you know, growing our visibility, but then also in terms of revenue down the road. And I would just want to add, right? And that's something that, that Dave, we've talked a lot about over the course of a ton of meetings the last few days, is the next step for us in our partnership yeah. is that integration into Watson X. We're here at Think, it's all about Watson X for us. And so making sure that our portfolio companies like Unstructured are getting plugged in and they're integrating into Watson X to deliver that extra value to our clients. Yeah. Yes. So, oh, go ahead, please. Oh, I was gonna say, so, I mean, right now companies have access to like historically 20% of their data is structured, right? So that's what they're accessing. Yeah. And we're saying, hey, do you want to 4X that? 
with the other 80% that we're enabling through our product yep. to be able to feed into kind of what the lake, the Watson Data Lake or Watson Data. Yep. So I'm interested in your philosophy. Uh, yep. I'm going to ask you a weird question. Okay. I love a weird question. <laughs> okay. In Hit horse racing. It. Okay. Okay. All right. We'll the horse favorite comes <laughs> in, but I'll, I'll make it okay, relevant. Okay. In horse racing, a favorite comes in 30, about 33% of the time. Okay. But the public are actually really good handicappers because a, a two to one comes in more often than a three to one or a four okay. to one. So the, 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 actually the yeah. pattern is right. Why is that relevant? Because when you look at the data, yeah. the percent of startups that fail that are series A, B, and C is the same. Yeah. It's like 70%. Yeah. So as an industry, we're horrible at making bets. How do you think about that? Yeah. Um, and and as, a, as a startup, you, you want a VC that's founder friendly. Most aren't, to be honest with you. <laughs> But a strategic investor maybe is a little bit more friendly. A structured is very friendly. I'm mean, okay. just put a plug in for that. So I, yeah. I, I told you it was a weird question, but how yeah. do you think about that? Basically, what I consider a failure uh, to, to, to allocate capital, because they, it's almost like the industry doesn't care. As long as we get one out of 10 and it's a 100 bagger, yeah. we're fine. Yeah. But that's not startup friendly. How do you yeah. look at startups? I love this question. And I think I touched on it a little bit more, but I want to be really clear on my answer, right? We are looking for exceptional teams and we very much over index on that. And we are all about finding market critical solutions, solutions that are going to help elevate our clients, right? That are going to help fill gaps that we have that are going to bring new emerging trends, new insights, right? Because even if a company fails, it's not a failure to us at IBM because we are developing and understanding where the market is going, where the trends are going, what the insights are going, right? And so for us, as long as we're learning something, it's hugely invaluable. Additionally, we are making great investments like we're making in Instructured. We are creating these and growing our ecosystem partnerships, right, which is incredibly invaluable to us. We are very much leaning in, as I said before, $500 million fund that we're all about here. It's not our only venture fund, right, right but our most critical, right, and we are looking for strategic partnerships that are going to help us grow that. They're going to help us leverage Watson X. They're going to integrate into leverage Watson X, and they're going to help us continue to grow our long-term relations with our clients, right? We're IBM, we're all about clients, we're all about partnerships. Our venture fund is helping us unlock more potential and greater value for our clients. Yeah, a small lever can move a big rock. Exactly. Right? And that's yeah. kind of what I'm, I'm hearing here in yeah. terms of the philosophy. And, yeah. and startups drive innovation. Right. I mean, that's they are huge. And I mean that I'm a huge component of innovation. I'm always talking to Dave Zeroff about this. Um, but startups drive a ton of innovation because we connect our startups, our portfolio companies with all of our business units, our software, our hardware, our consulting teams, our research teams. Right. They are getting a piece of all of IBM, which is hugely invaluable to them, but also to us because they're delivering, as I said, those insights, those market trends. Right. And it's it's critical. Yeah, and I think just to kind of like yeah. talk about the partnership a piece uh, a bit, um, you know, we were lucky as a startup raising money to have, you know, there's a bunch of people who wanted to join in on the round, right? Yeah. I guess, <laughs> for lack of better words. We had a choice in the partners. Um, we chose IBM, right? Because we understood the value that they could provide to us. Yep. And you, you were talking about like 30% are successful. This is a bet on our part, right? <laughs> and kind of the strategic partners, um, about who's going to make us successful down the road. And like IBM is a massive global organization, right? But like this partnership with steering us directly with the people that are going to be the most helpful for us in these integrations, in getting the product into customers' hands, into kind of the IBM architecture is so incredibly important because we can get lost. Uh, the startup would get lost here otherwise. Uh, Last, uh, can okay, I, please, sorry, can yeah. I just add one more thing? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I just want to make two more points. So one point I would make is once we invest, that's just the start right? Our relationship is so much more to that. It's a go to market relationship. Mm -hmm. It is a helping connect with clients. Dave, we've done that a bunch today. Yep. We're connecting, I said, with the business units, right? So when we invest, we think about it as a long term relationship in which we are going to go to market together, right? And so it's not just about initially starts investing, but it comes much more than that. Now, how long have you been in this role? I've only been in this role for a little bit. Okay. I've been at IBM for a long time. Okay, so, so I got a, my last question. Yes. And Dave, I'm gonna start with you, and then you can you can bring us home. Yeah. Away. Please. A year from now, we'll be at Think 2025. Yeah. What would you like to say 
Dave, then that you can't say now? What would I like to say then that I can't say now? Yeah. Um, we are just starting this relationship yeah. right now. Right. I would love to say that IBM was the reason why we took off. Yeah. Right. Why we are in everybody's you know architecture for um, enabling AI down for these AI applications downstream, yeah. and it started you know at think it started with this relationship with really with the investment. But you know, I can't I can't forecast the future. But I would love to have this be the start of something pretty awesome down the road. Yeah, great. And for us, if I can add, yeah, we want to see Unstructured embedded in Watson X. We want to see all of our clients using it, and we want to get after clients together, right? And so for us, I just want to say we are doubling down on our commitment for AI innovation, right? And we want to use companies like Unstructured to deliver transformational technologies to all of our clients and all of our partners. All right, well, I'll see you guys in a year. Yeah, I would love that. We would love right? that, yeah. Really enjoyed the conversation. Thank, Thank you so, so much, and congratulations. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank right. you. Okay, keep it right there. We're, we're here at the BECC in Boston, The Cube. Go to siliconangle.com, thecube.net for all the action. My name is Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.